Are there straightforward formulas to help us get through social situations? That's what we're going to talk about today. Design is the application of intent, the opposite of happenstance, and the antidote to accident. Robert L. Peters. Today, what we're going to talk about and related to that quote is called social equation, the formulas of deep friendships, charm, trust, and being a people person by Patrick King. There are two people out there who write these very small books, but they're good. They are informational. They're almost a little bit like this podcast where we take a research paper or take a book and boil it down to its contents. The main researcher's ideas with some stories about what we experienced about this type of thing. The two different authors are Patrick King, who wrote this book, and the other one is called Peter Hollins. And we're going to do his book next week. But the idea is, can we boil down some very good ideas so that we can take off running? Give us some ideas of how we can go. And this book I thought was great because he gave formulas for life. It's easier to remember formulas for life because instead of going, okay, so I should be strong and I should say the bold thing. Instead, what this book does and what Patrick King does is he tries to boil things down into formulas. I enjoyed this book. I joined the next book too. But let's take a look a little bit about what he says of how we can have better social interactions with people using formulas. So I have to admit, I think this podcast is going to be a little hard to say just because what he's doing is he's taking these social concepts and putting them into formulas. For example, his first one is trustworthiness equals consistency times reliability divided by the number of betrayals. Another way of putting it is that whenever you're betrayed, it's going to take a lot of trustworthiness to get back that error that you made, that thing that you didn't do. If you're constantly betraying someone, even if you're consistent and reliable all the other times, those betrayals are going to add up. So in this case, the betrayals are harder hitting than the consistency and reliability. But a formula, how do we get people to trust us? We're consistent, we're reliable, and we don't betray people. Workplace harmony, respect times cooperation, divided by conflicts and ego. So if we have these constant battles, they take away from the respect that we would have normally earned. Romantic compatibility equals common interest times physical attraction times emotional connection to the power of adaptability. So no matter how common your interest and no matter how physically attractive or emotionally attractive you are, being able to be adaptable and meet situations head on together, that's going to have that power to it. You know, I think people can have different formulas. I like how he does that. I just wish it was more brain and less physical. How we can be effective learning, curiosity times engagement. So how curious we are about the subject, how engaged we are in learning it divided by the number of distractions. So these are all, you know, simple ways. There's simple ways of having a look at how we can build relationships with other people. And I think it's a good way of putting it. If you were to go into a certain situation and you were looking for a way to be attractive to another potential date, or you were looking to have some sort of social influences, these kind of reminders are there to help you. For example, social influence equals the number of followers times engagement rate, how much are people engaging with you, divided by criticism. I like how he's tried to boil these down and try to give some ideas to people about how they can do better, whatever aspect they're trying to do. He said that he researched all these items and tried to discover ways of communicating how working together can work. The whole book is full of these types of formulas that we have. When we talk about friendships, he says the importance is proximity plus frequency plus duration plus intensity means that you have to be close to friends. But you know, do you? Not all friends are close. I have one of my closest friends I barely see. We met playing video games decades ago. 
We have still been friends over this whole period of time. And we get together once or twice a year, go camping. We have a great time. It's fun. It's something we can do together. And so our proximity is terrible. Our frequency is we talk online quite a bit, but rarely in person. And I guess our duration, if you count online, is pretty good, but not in person. Intensity? Yeah, we're kind of jokey people. So I don't know that we have deep intensity between us, but we're great friends. You can use this as a basis for building great friendships with others and think about this kind of advice about why these things would be important. And if you're thinking about building up a friendship with someone else, you might think, how can I increase our frequency? How can I increase our intensity, which he says is this like emotional depth together? My friend and I in Kansas, we're there for each other. When I had to have surgery, she offered to come up here, even though we barely knew each other, and she could help me get through the recovery time through surgery. When something bad goes on, we're there for each other, even if it's long distance. While my friend Em and I are seeing each other almost several times a week, we do lots of things together. We have a huge intensity together, a lot of duration, and a lot of frequency. And we're very close. That's a great idea. In your mind, if you can think of you want to build friendships together, these are all things that are good ideas. And maybe you can see through these formulas what you're lacking in a particular friendship. But I also believe that you can have different ways of doing it. There are different kinds of friends. There's different kinds of relationships, even romantic relationships. So it may not be the end all be all. These are great reminders in helping us do better with other people. He gives a short formula about how to have a great conversation for small talk. People find small talk very difficult. What do you say to people that doesn't sound boring? So, how's the weather near your house? Yeah, my weather's pretty good. I wish it was less rainy. But instead, you can be engaging in conversation. I go to this conference when I worked in my last job, and it was, you know, four days. I made customer friends for life. We got to know each other. We got to dive in deep. And that was because we had great, quick conversations. When you're at a conference, there's not a lot of time to talk to each other. But what he says the formula is that if you get asked a question, you'll answer the question you were asked. That's step number one. Then provide two extra lines of details, then pass the turn, hand it back to the other person. This is a good way of doing it. I happen to know that there was a guy who was one of my customers, loved fishing. And so we were able to do something. So Joe, what do you get out and do very frequently? Oh, well, I go bird watching. I do a lot of bird watching. In fact, in May, it's pretty much all I do. It gives me the chance to get outside and enjoy nature. You know, I know you love nature too. You are the avid fisherman. How have you been doing getting out there and getting in with the fish? So by taking that conversation, we had a really good in-depth conversation about how much he loved fishing, loves his boat, loved getting out of the nature. We turn something we don't share in common into something we do share in common by that connection of nature. I've had other customers who have very different lives than I do. They live in across the nation. They have kids. I don't have kids, married, very involved with their children. There's ways of building that gap. I talked about my customer who loves horses. We have been friends for a long time, and I know she just loves her horses. So whenever I talk to her, how's your horses doing? How are are you doing some shows? Are you getting involved in bringing them out to various places? You can keep a conversation alive by answering questions, giving additional details, and handing it back to the other person. The point of small talk is to turn it into bigger talk. You get a feel for the other person. You get to trust the other person. And he says to remember too, that communication is never just verbal. So that adds another piece to his formula. Thought it was a great way. Like I said, people panic in small talk. Someone at my last company said that she wanted to meet everybody. So what she did is she followed me around throughout the conference. And so I would introduce her to all the people. She wanted to get to know more people in our community of customers. And she said, I don't know what you're doing with this small talk thing, but you're great at it. You really know how to talk to a person, make them feel heard, ask them questions about themselves and learn something new about them. 
you really get to know people and they get to know you. I don't know what it is. I don't know where I learned it. I think it was because I was an only child for so many years that when I moved to a new Air Force base or we went on vacation and we stayed at a hotel, I had to sort of instantly make friends, hang out with those people, and then off we all went when we had to move yet again. So then he gives a formula, which I really liked, about the perfect personal introduction. How do you introduce one person to another? Now, this is a fantastic skill to learn. And he says his formula is past plus future. And so this is where you're going to start off by saying something about this person. Hi, Sally. This is Bob. Bob works at the University of Chicago. He's a person like you are in the same position, present, right? In the past, they started rolling out the financial module, just like you're trying to roll out right now. They had some bumps and bruises along the way, but they got through it. I think he would be a great person in the future for you to talk to and find out more about how they got over those hurdles. In his case, he's saying the present is where we are now, their job, their roles. The past is something about they did something in the past that adds to their credibility, maybe establishes a rapport to them. I always called myself a matchmaker at conferences because I'm good at, first of all, seeing someone who's not having a great time. I will find someone that they will love. I introduce them and that person now is never alone at the conferences anymore because they found someone to hang out with. But even on a professional level, I can match up people. You're trying to do this certain aspect of the software. This person just got done doing it. You two have a lot to talk about. But being that matchmaker so that people feel good about meeting new people at a conference. I don't know about you, but a lot of people feel lost. They go to a conference. They don't really know anybody. They walk around just sort of bumbling around. No one's making introductions for them. And then they just maybe go back to their hotel room, feeling like the conference wasn't a very good situation. So if you can get to the part where you're great at introducing people, matchmaking to people, everyone will love you because they will be able to bring you together with other people like you and your conference experiences will be great and you'll just love it. And part of introducing is always, like he said, saying why they should have a connection and why they should talk in the future about things that will make each of their lives better. He even tries to give a formula for jokes. He said, the first thing is, is say something normal. Your joke always starts with something normal. So where someone even doesn't even think it's funny or doesn't really know where this joke is going. Then you bring in the second stage, which is the absurd, something that is just what? What did you just say? And then the last ingredient he said is specificity. You're going to bring in some detail that'll tie the whole thing together and become a joke. He gave some examples of jokes, and I tried a little bit as a practice of my own to come up with my own jokes using this. Here's my bad joke. I was going to start eating healthier, but I heard it was important to finish what you start. So I decided I'm going to commit to finishing my ice cream first before I eat my vegetables. So you take something normal and something absurd and then bringing in the specific details. I don't know if my joke was all that funny, but you get the idea. So he's even trying to help you be funnier with other people. What I liked best about this book is this thought of using patterns to create rules. And so you can create rules for yourself. You don't have to just use the ones that are in this book if you wanted to read this book. I kind of enjoyed it. Like I said, all his books are very short, low cost, and just give you some great ideas to that you can jump into and start doing yourself. So I decided to give my own step of trying to create my own formulas, personal growth, equals goal setting times experimentation divided by your comfort zone size. Progress in our goals equal daily effort times consistency divided by procrastination. Not genius, not brain science. It will always help me to remember that procrastination, the more I do it, the less I will gain towards my daily goals. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at this formula book. Like I said, none of it was ground shaking in any sort of way, but I did like how it sort of boiled everything down. I think once you have some of these formulas that work for you or develop some of your own formulas, you could write them in a small card, something you could like throw in your wallet or stick to the back of your phone so that you always remember what it is that you're trying to do, whether you're trying to be more funny, be better at conferences and doing introductions 
or you're trying to build stronger relationships. Try to come up with some of your own. So of course, that's going to be my challenge this week. Try to come up with three formulas for a problem you're having right now. If you're thinking about weight loss, it is going to be burning calories times activity divided by eating calories and rest, sitting on the chair, something like that. Come up with your own formula. Try to create your own structure and see if it doesn't help you tackle some of the problems you're having. Is there a way that you can boil down some of the issues you have into just a quick formula? All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I knew this one would be a hard one to read because the book itself is just a bunch of formula words where he explains them. It is a little bit different, but I think if you're looking for this kind of thing, his book might be something you want to pick up. It's a different way, I think, of looking at problems and solving them. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast, write a review, or even email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I'd love to hear from you, or you can message me on Twitter. The links are in the show notes. And remember, our walk towards progressing towards our goals, even by using formulas, takes small steps. Boy, I should have thought of a small step formula. 